Welcome to Thursday Night Knives, live on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. And tonight, we will be talking about over-designed knives. Can a knife be over-designed? Uh, and then we will talk uh, also about the Best Tech No Guard. That is uh, Kambu's new uh, design. Kambu is a, a guy, Gregor uh, Grabinski, I think is his last name, from Poland, who makes some really unique and one might argue over-designed knives and uh, has them produced by Best Tech. He's got a new one out that's pretty cool. Hey, Talica for life. Good to have you here, sir. And then we will talk about several other things. We'll have a knife fight, exotic versus plain Jane. Now I've heard exotic now is a word you can't use. Not sure why. Nick EDC, are great to have you here, sir. Happy Thursday night knives. Chris Blade Ogre with his bowies. Good to have you. Incognito is here. And Caleb, howdy, howdy, sir. How's it going? Sean C., how you doing, man? It's funny to see. And we have Dave. Dave, we're, we're going to be honoring you also because uh, we're going to be talking tonight about the giveaway knife next week for the Gentleman Junkies. And uh, that's one that Dave has bequeathed to the channel. And it's greatly appreciated. Hey, Quack, good to have you here, sir. I I'm, I'm interested to know... Um, before we get into this pocket check, I've been uh, I've been noodling around and uh, in this last hour, and I have some incredibly smooth knives around me, and two relatively new ones for me, the uh, the Vero Synapse, and then also the Finch Cimarron, both incredibly um, smooth, especially this Vero uh, with the weight of the blade, it just falls, and and I'm curious how how important is that to you? Really, how important is smooth? How important is it that you have to um, get your thumb out of the way? You know, it's like, um, I don't know. It's sort of a hallmark of quality. North Code, Ryan, great to have you here. Bob and Jit, I know what you mean. I know you mean, Jim. We know you mean, Jim. Here, I'm about to adjust my mic, and it could make a haunting noise because of all the spring. There we go. All right. So I'm just curious to find out before we get into things, what do you think? How important is that kind of action, that kind of smooth action? And for instance, um, with the new uh, Crystal Aurora, it's so smooth coming out and then going back in, it has a little polite little stop there, and then you just nudge it back in. And to me, that's very pleasing as well. So I'm just curious what do you guys think. Um, anyway, I hope you're all having a great night, uh, an awesome Thursday, and uh, here we are like butting up against the weekend, and I am so excited because sometimes a four-day week is longer than a five-day week. How does that work? Um, I don't know. I don't know. You tell me. You tell me. But uh, so smoothness, smoothness, what does it matter? Does it matter? Does fall shutty action matter? I don't know. You can let me know as we as we get into it here. Um, but as we do get into it, let me let me show you something. So so today I posted a picture of my of my carry, and today was a very disciplined light carry. I carried one knife today, one knife, and then an implement of chaos. That's one of my favorite terms for these things that are knife adjacent, but not necessarily knives like tomahawks and, um, uh, you know, coubatons and, uh, you know, uh, uh, expandable batons. Well, today I was carrying this, my Wingard wearables quill. I love this thing. Just have days off feels good. Yeah, that's true. Just having a day off does feel good, especially, especially when you know other people are at work. Like if your work has some sort of a one is none, Bob, I know, I know, Sean, I know I felt I felt a little vulnerable out there in the world, um, knowing, of course, that all I needed to do was unlock a cabinet that was an arm's reach away, and I would have a full, a full selection of anything I wanted. Well, not anything, but most things. Um, so, you know, just in my walking around, I had this Wingard wearables quill, and you know what? This thing, you know, I've been talking about this a lot, and I've, I've been really into the Wingard wearables stuff. Um, because it's so unique and it's so, you know, primitive in a way. And, uh, you know, we don't think of tomahawks as being um, everyday carry things. And when I saw this before I got it, I was like, how, how am I going to carry this? I'll have to make a little kydex sheath so I don't stab myself and such. 
but actually this thing rides really comfortably in the bottom of my pocket and I have yet to reach in there for, for it or anything else and poke my finger. I was worried about this kind of thing. And even, even if you do, you'd have to be really jamming your hand in there pretty hard to, to, you know, my biggest fear is getting it under the fingernail. That would suck. But, um, this thing is, uh, well, you might think, what is that for, Bob? What do you use that for? And um, I would use it like this, you know, uh, as, a, as, a, as a force multiplier when punching or a hole maker, if you will, um, like this. I find this sort of hammer fist the most comfortable and most realistic. Uh, you know, you could have it like this and then with your jab, just not turn your your fist over all the way. And, you know, this is what happens with me all the time. You know, I'm out there street fighting and, you know, getting in all sorts of crazy scraps. That's, that's not true. And if I did, you know, it would have to be a pretty desperate situation to pull this thing out. <laughs> it's like a belly ring. Yeah, it is a bit. It's also a bit like an earring, but it's also a bit of a worry stone for me. I find myself just holding it and feeling it. Is that a broken coat hanger? No, sir. No, sir. This is a fully, uh, this is A2 tool steel, I believe, or O1. I can't remember what it is, but it's fully forged and then filed. And uh, yeah, it's just a, it's an implement of chaos. But at the same time, it's, it's a, it's something people see it and they don't, they're not exactly sure what it is. Um, you know, like you thought it was a coat hanger, for instance, but, uh, but it is a very effective thing if you need it to be. If not, it's a great worry stone. Hey, guys, how's it going? We have Ezekiel and Jonathan with us. Good evening, sir. An ear pick. Yeah, yeah. Well, first of all, it does rest behind the ear, and it is shaped like an ear. But I would not, yeah, I'm, I'm a fan of A2 as well. I would not use this to dig around in there or itch. Peter, how's it going, sir? Great to have you here with us. Uh, you've got a couple of uh, dandies lately especially man i keep coming coming back to that de villiers but uh yeah you've gotten some pretty sweet items in incognito says you can use it as a fish hook on some assailant that is true i've been trying to figure out how to use it in this to use the hook part and i haven't quite uh, mastered that but you could yeah you could fish hook oh my god i work with a guy a great guy uh he is he's a tough dude he's a cameraman he's our he's our best uh, I really like working with him. He's very creative and nothing you can ask him to do on the job will he balk at because he's Iraqi and he used to live and work in Baghdad and he's been shot with an AK-47 on the job and he's got the scars to to prove it. So everything, I think the quill is stainless. I'm pretty sure it's not. Pretty sure it's not, but maybe it is because it's forged. Um but I'm not sure. I will have to double check. Uh, I, I have the information card upstairs. This guy, Ali. And uh, once, you know, he's a great guy. We're just hanging out, talking on the job. And we're talking about fights. And he got into a bunch of fights when he was a teenager growing up in Baghdad. And uh, he's like, oh, put me in a headlock, Bob. I'll show you what I do. And so I put him in a headlock and he fish hooked me. He just and just had me on the ground like that. And, uh, man, I've, you know, he had no bones about sticking his two fingers in his coworker's mouth. It was the funniest damn thing. Cause I was not expecting it. And, uh, whew. Oh, Ryan wears his every day in his belt. I've seen that kind of carry too, where you can put, you can put it over the belt and then just this is showing. And then this disappears into the little coin pocket. So Ryan, what, what do you think, man? Uh, what do you think of this quill? Obviously, you like it. You carry it every day. But what's your favorite handhold for this? Hey, Jared. Jared is a new patron of ours. How are you doing good, sir? Good evening, Bob. Reminds me of a raptor claw. Yeah, yeah. There's a bit of uh, there's a bit of that raptor claw theme going on with, with Wingard wearable stuff. Uh, here, if you see this, this is kind of gnarly and raptor-ish. Um, yeah, I, I just like his design sense, you know. Do some cool stuff over there. But uh, yeah, so I was speaking about smooth knives earlier. And the other thing I was carrying today is the smoothest, excuse me, the smoothest of the hinderers that I have. Kraken Tactical. How's it going? Zach does make awesome gear. And you, sir, make awesome gear, though I've never 
held any of it in my hand. I love the look of it, of it. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be following you on Instagram now, and I will have to remedy that at some point, uh, in terms of not having any of your, of your work, which I think is beautiful. Uh, here we go. Uh, this is the, the DLT exclusive XM 18 Warncliffe, no choil. And, uh, this is one that I, uh, very promptly dropped on its tip, chipped the tip off, man, did that really hurt. And I sent it to Jared Neve and he, he uh, removed enough metal to get that perfect tip back. Um, you know, I really, I, I do love this knife uh, and it is quite smooth and I do get a kick out of that uh, because it's a different experience than the other four, uh, the other three hinderers I have, which are two of them are XM24s several years old, and then the other one is a several-year-old um, uh, Spanto. And none of them, this is the first triway I've had, and of course I've left the bearings on, and I really enjoy the action on this. Uh, but now I'm going to get shallow for a second and talk about aesthetics. And with the Warncliffe, I find... Um, I actually find I like the way it looks better with a finger choil, even though I like having the extra cutting edge, which is about equals about a half inch on this blade, maybe a little less. Um, I like the way the finger choil on my uh, 24. Oh, here. I happen to have it right here. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Peter. Man, that's lovely, he says. And I say thank you as if I made it or designed it, but I did pick it out and pay money for it. Ha <laughs> ha. Good morning, Patty. Good morning, Stephen. Great to have you here, sir. As always, a pleasure. It was cool to see that picture of your grandson before he shipped out uh, to the Royal Navy. That was pretty cool. Uh, hope you're doing well, sir. Uh, but I do like the way this looks with the choil. I just like that choil design. I swapped my XM24 to phosphor bronze. My 18 is still on bearing. So how do you like it uh, on the phosphor bronze? I'm curious. Uh, what what difference has have you noticed in its smoothosity? Um, is it more quote unquote hydraulic? Is it still flipping well? Uh, because I know that on well this XM18 has the best flipping action of any of my hinderers. Uh, well, especially I mean not including this one because it's on bearings, but I mean this one you don't have to you don't have to load up or do any of that stuff. It just, this has always been a great flipper, but I'm curious uh, what your experience has been, Peter, with the phosphor browns. Let me know how you like it. So yeah, this was my carry today, just uh, the, the 18 and the quill. And uh, we have uh, Ryan Northcode likes his quill too. So uh, it's an interesting thing. And, and I didn't quite get it until I got it. I got two of them, as you may remember, and when you put them next to each other, they look like a heart. And I got them for Valentine's Day, one for me, one for the missus. Uh, she still has yet to, <laughs> yet to use or carry her. Yes, flips very well. It's a little slower on the clothes. Ah, okay. Well, I guess it, obviously it has the same detent, so it's gonna, it's gonna flip out nicely, you know. Um, but yeah, maybe I will, maybe I'll experiment with, uh, with my 18 here and see what it's like with the the phosphor. I'm also thinking even though I love these, you know, natural green <laughs> I've heard I've heard some pretty disgusting uh correlations with this color, but um you know, uh I'm thinking of swapping this out for something else at some point. Hey Gav's dad, great to have you here, man. Finally caught you live. Awesome. Well, it's great to be here. And actually uh you can let me know, and I want everyone to let me know uh, what you were carrying today, since this is the pocket check. But also, if you feel like answering my question, how important is smooth? Because lately, I, I have been, I've been, I've been wondering that. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm starting to develop an idea in my own mind. I like to think what everyone else's thoughts are on that. Uh, but yeah, let us know, Gav's dad. Let us know, Peter Northcode. Let us know what you've been carrying today. I'd love to know. Uh, North Code Ryan says, uh, the quill makes a fine puncture tool. Case in point, recently I messed up a knife blade pushing through a mud flap for a big truck. Quill would and will remedy that issue. Wait, 
uh, case in point. Recently, I messed up a knife blade. Oh, pushing through a mud flap for a big truck. I got you. Oh, you just needed to make a hole. It is a hole maker. That is exactly what it does. And and uh, I don't know if you've seen the videos with Zach of Wingard Wearables. He got uh, he, a, a turkey went bad, I guess, in his freezer. They lost power or something. He had a big turkey and he was testing his implements on it. And and with this, it's just like he just barely touched it and it would just, you know, bury itself in the flesh. So you could make holes on an attacker naturally, but I, it comes in really handy for other stuff. Like you're talking about putting a hole in a mud flap. I've used it too. I know it's gross, but to clean my fingernails. Uh, uh, Zach has used it to clean in the corners of his uh, cast iron pans. I don't know if you have that issue. Peter says, I like the phosphor on the 24. I take it camping. Less opportunity for gunk in the pivot. Of course. Of course. And you know what? That 24 blade is so big uh, that it will it will take you know some of that uh, momentum and will open the blade and you'll probably feel nothing, uh, you know, no worse for the wear. No worse for the wear. Uh, what blade shape do you have that you take camping? James Culp said hello. Hello, James Culp. It's great to have you here, sir. And here we have Dave carrying the SIG K320. Tanto and the Microtech Dirac today. The Dirac is a beautiful little out the front with the with the opener on the side, and that Sig K320. Um, our good friend uh, uh, from Stone and Steel, Stu, <laughs> is a uh, is in law enforcement, and uh, he just sent me a picture of what he was carrying a couple of days ago, and he he said he carries that Sig. K320, he uses the drop point, but he carries it daily, and then he rotates his other two knives out. But uh, a solid choice there, Dave, and you have the endorsement of law enforcement behind you. Today, I carried my custom Todd Begg Glimpse. Ooh, we have an aristocrat and a Hoback MK Ultra. Nice, man. Wow. Wow, that was, that's an expensive day. You ever do that where you're, you 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 start to tally up what uh, everything costs that you have on you? Uh, the Todd bag, I'm very impressed, sir. Uh, Peter says, I went classic today. Kershaw Blur and S30V. I like it. I like that you can, uh, can. I like that you do carry some of the older things that you've had around in your collection, presumably for a while. I like your collection videos, or um your collection shots, by the way, Peter, uh, showing the the family port, you know, put down 20 blades in one shot or so. And uh, I like those shots a lot. Scott N., great to have you here, sir. Spyderco Grasshopper, a solid choice. Well, any Spyderco is a solid choice. The Grasshopper, that's a nice that's a nice one. And they, they made that with the steel handle, right? Gav's dad, actually just finished my second folder last night. Got to carry it today, giving it to my buddy tomorrow. Super proud of it. Damn. Ga okay. That's pretty impressive. I would love to see it. Uh, you can just join. You or anyone else can just join. Go to the knifejunkie.com slash join. Aim the camera at you. Put in your earbuds. And uh, I'd love to meet you. And I'd love to see this folder you just showed off. So if you're interested in any um, getting any free publicity for your budding knife career, let me know. I'd love to see that knife. But if not, if you're embarrassed or uh, you don't feel like putting clothes on or anything like that, just uh, send us a picture. I'd love to see your knife. Sounds awesome. JN, great to have you here. Hi, knife persons. Bob, Jim, just walked in. Put grok away. Putting grok away. Putting grok away. Well, do it. Uh, make sure grok is... is uh, well, well fed and taken care of before putting him away. Had the Graham Razzle in my pocket today. Very nice. Said, oh, agent, you were talking, you mentioned the, uh, okay, so uh, since I have you here, let me show you what I mean. So um, Agent Orange Peel uh, commented on a video, my, my most recent, uh, the one that came out yesterday, about drop points and the most beautiful, or you know, just the drop points in my collection. And he said, how could you forget the Sabenza? Right. That was you agent. I'm, I'm pretty sure. And I got back to you in, uh, you know, I went into ultra nerd mode and said, actually, technically it's a clip point and I'll show you what I mean here. So, okay. If you look here, here's the thumb ramp. And then you have that. And then this angle here is a clip. 
this is a clip point all the way to the tip. So if you look at this knife, right where that angle is, the classic Sabenza 21, that makes it a clip point, sir. I know it's subtle. It's subtle, but uh, I, I, I defy any of you to prove me wrong. Uh, so I have forever considered this a clip point once I noticed that little feature, actually. So, Agent, sorry, you probably didn't need all that. Graham Razel, great choice. Um, is that a custom or is that a uh, mid-tech? Either way, I'll take it. I have no Razzle-type blades. James says, I'm carrying an Ozark Trail 8801 pocket knife with stag finish. Nice. I love stag or stagalon or whatever. Well, it's over there under a bunch of papers. I have a, uh, I, I have a, um, a rough rider that has great, I can't tell man. I, f, 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 because it's a rough rider, I, I'm pretty sure it's not stag. I'm pretty sure it's like a stag finish or a stag alon or whatever you want to call it, fake stag. Um, but man, it is so convincing. And I'll tell you what, I love the way it feels in hand. Not only does it look great and evocative of a time gone by, but it gives great texture. I love it. And speaking of stag, oh my God. And I'll get to Quark's comment in a second. Um, Matt Chase of Hogtooth Knives uh, on the way home from work sent me a uh, progress picture of the um, double-edged loveless fighter sub hilt fighter he's making for me the blade and it is whoa man it is beautiful he came up with his own um uh, pattern damascus uh pattern weld steel and he's basically forged out the 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 blade and it looks so gorgeous and the reason i bring that up is because it's gonna have a stag handle which is very exciting Get out of here, you liar. Quack has a Magna Cut Shark's Foot 8020. I wanted to exclusively carry it for a month to test Magna Cut. Tomorrow will be day 30. So far, it's great. Quack, forgive me for calling you a liar. That's just envy. Envy just blurting its way out of my face hole. I'm, I, I think it's, first of all, the Shark's Foot is so cool. I'm definitely getting that. As a matter of fact, I did a little bit of groveling with John Demko. He was, uh, I interviewed him a couple, uh, last or two weeks ago and his podcast will be coming up here soon. Uh, but you know, they're, they're dropping on the new 80 20.5 batch in August. And I asked him, please set aside a shark's foot for me because I didn't buy one when I was there at blade show and could have. Um, but, uh, so you have a full custom with a shark's foot blade and magna cut steel. That's awesome. Let us uh, let us know. I know you said day 30, everything's great, but I'd be interested uh, to get a couple of uh, thoughts on magna cut. Uh, Rough Rider Reserve 008 common stock. I'm not sure what that is. Is that a stockman knife? Bench made Adamus and the Emerson Sheepdog Bowie again. That's awesome. Uh, wow, only three for you today. I, I, aren't you usually a four man, a four knife man? Incognito. I was mostly in bed today, and my bed knife is a cold steel Bowie machete. Good man to have a bed knife. I play with it while watching anime. That's awesome, man. I hope you were in bed out of choice today and not because you're not feeling well, Incognito. Patty says, oh, GEC Viper in brown burlap micarta. I love the 47. That is the first GEC I fell in love with. And and uh, the last GEC I've ever, the last new GEC I've ever gotten uh, from this last drop, and it was a um, a gift from Mike Latham, and it was a uh, you know sort of a blem I guess, uh, but it the blem was so tiny tiny I didn't even know it until someone pointed it out to me when I had it so close to the camera. So brown burlap my card of course uh, I love so. Awesome carry today, sir. The Max Ace Goliath 2. That is another cool knife, man. Sean, that's a cool... I love that knife. I never held it, but uh, looking at Dave's review of it, uh, this Old Swords uh, Blade Review's review of it, I love that thing. And it's right in the perfect size range, right? It's like, it's like a 4.2-inch blade, something like that. Love it. Jared, carrying the Mini Adamus. Uh, and Lion Steel Best Man slip joint. I love the Best Man, man. It's it's just a love fest here. I, I'm digging everything, everything you guys have been carrying. The Best Man, uh, 
and all of those lion steel slip joints. I have none of them in front of me. I have, I own one, uh, the, um, the Gitano. Awesome. By the way, Goody Van Poppel's the guy who designed the Gitano. Follow him on Instagram. He just did a custom uh, kind of elongated Gitano or Gitano. I'm not sure how you pronounce it for, um, what was it for? For some exclusive uh, uh, um, purveyor online. And oh my God, his custom versions of that knife are gorgeous. The Finch 1929 in Crawdad Jigbone. Man, you guys are just killing it. I love that. I I want to get the 1929 with jigged bone if I can find one or if they come back out with it. I love that they use bone on these modernized, old-fashioned knives. I think it's awesome. And a Kershaw Strata for folders. Now, Sean, which Strata was that? Wearing the LT right gen, uh, next gen as my fixed blade. See? Good man. He's got a fixed blade. He's got a large. I'm, I'm assuming the that it's the large Strata. And uh, and the crawdad with jig or the crawdad jig bone 1929. Nice choice, Max the maker. Max, it's great to have you here, sir. CQC 11K, uh, an old favorite of mine, and the CRKT Razzle Cliff. That's an interesting knife, the Razzle Cliff. Uh, my buddy uh, Kurt carried one until it basically fell apart, and he was using it. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, during his, uh, he was training firefighters and using it a lot. And, and one day it just sort of like <sighs> fell apart on him. I mean, not fully. I'm, I'm, I'm being, uh, Oh, grok groceries. Yes. Putting away the groceries, just like the flaming lip song. Gav's dad said, sorry, I missed that. How do I share my knife? Oh, go to the knife junkie.com slash join. And uh, this is for any of y'all who want to come on and say hi. And uh, and then just uh, sign your name in as you want it to appear on screen. Click the go button, you know, aim, aim the camera at you. And and you have to have headphones, earbuds, something like that. Otherwise, we'll get a crippling um, sort of echo. You know, we'll hear my voice coming out through your speakers and going back in your mic. And it turns into a, a hellscape for sound. So um, do that right there and let us see. I'm excited, especially always excited to see new things. Uh, speaking of new things, it's new to me and new to the knife world in the last year and a half. Uh, and that's our gentleman junkie giveaway knife for next week. Uh, given to us by the great and powerful Dave of this old sword blade reviews. Um, you guys know him and love him. And uh, he's he's an awesome guy and a very generous guy, as it as it turns out. and. This knife is one that he gave us. I, I think it's really cool. And you know what? This flirts with our, our subject tonight. Can a knife be over-designed? And I'll explain to you why later. But let me show this off to you. Nick E.D. Sear had, excuse me, had the cargo pants on today. So I was able to carry the Hoback Husky. What a cool knife. XM18 and an S45 uh, with S45 Spanto and a Chaparral lightweight. And okay, man. And an MKM Malgma, Malga, jeez, man. So let's see. Mm, yeah, let's say that's a, uh, so. You were carrying about sixteen hundred bucks worth of knives today. I I applaud that. Ooh, I hope your wife's not watching. Sorry, man. Sorry. Uh, I I mean sixteen dollars worth of knives. But uh, all, all jokes aside, that husky is so cool. I'm I'm a little bit jealous of those who have it because I don't. And the thought of a of a quarter inch thick folding blade just psh, gets my motor running. All right, so let me show you this. This is the Arcturus by um, Real Steel. Arcturus. Look at that thing. So this is oh wait. That's drool. No, I'm just kidding. Let me let me clean that off. So it's a full-bellied clip point. Look at that. Full belly. It's all belly. Of course, all belly has a little bit of straight. So you could use you could use this if you needed something straight, but pretty much it's a full belly. And look at look at the size of this. It's it's right in my wheelhouse. You got one, two, three and three quarters inches blades, three and three quarters inches for the blade. And beautiful um, coyote tan, or no, this is kind of a dark, 
brown earth. What do they call that? FDE, flat dark earth, um, G10. And then you have limited liners. That's one thing I like about this. You look at uh, the liner on, well, you look at the liner lock side and it's, they keep it slender, you know, and then you can see it's, it's uh, slender on this side and, and pretty much ends where it needs to, which is kind of right under here. So you have a lot of stability and a lot of strength under the pivot, but you don't have all that added weight under the handle, it, but it's totally rigid. Um, but, you know, all of those things aside, this is just like awesome steel wheel quality. Um, my first steel wheel was the, uh, was the old cut jack. And I really dug that knife. And that was in D2 and FRN. And I ended up selling it or giving it to someone. I can't remember what became of that knife. But uh, you get a, a, a more expensive, a more upscale steel wheel uh, knife. And you can just see that everything they seem to do uh, has a, a high quality level. So this thing um, is a beautiful knife. It's nice and slender. It's on uh, phosphor bronze washers. Flips out nicely with that flipper. It's got a giant choil here. That's a sharpening choil, unless you have elfin fingers, um, because it's just, it's like a nice big, it's a style choil. It's there for style, because it is cool. But don't put your finger there unless you widen it out a touch. Uh, I love the shape of the G10 handle. It feels awesome in hand, uh, especially in this sort of saber grip at that angle. But also, if you choke up on it, this giant swale here is a nice place to put your thumb. So this is the Gentleman Junkie knife giveaway knife for uh, the month of July, which we happen to be in at the moment. And we will be giving this away next week. We will spin the wheel of destiny. And all those who are gentlemen junkies in that very moment will be uh, will be entered to win. And will uh, you know, your chances are still pretty good. Your chances are still pretty good. Um, thank you, Dave, for donating this knife. I love it. I love it. And uh, I'll be sad to see it go. So Dave has donated a number of knives to the channel. Uh, I think to date, seven? I think seven? Uh, a number of them have been, have been given away in the knife giveaways. And all of them have been coveted by me. So it, it's kind of a nice thing. I get to foster them for a while, prepare them for the world, if you will, uh, but they don't get uh, matriculated. That's, a, that's a, a word from school. Remember that? Matriculated. They don't matriculate into my knife collection. They, they stay over on, I have a shelf for knives that are on loan or knives that are meant to be given away or or, you know, that kind of thing. So this lives on that shelf, but I've had a chance to kind of, kind of broken it in for you. So look at it that way. Um, this is a, a solid creature and I've been, I've been, you know, fondling it here and there, but rest assured, I have uh, gotten no, no major, I've gotten no marks on it and I will swab it down with rubbing alcohol. Um, so I, I, we have uh, Scott, who is here with us, and uh, he wants to show us his blade. So I am looking forward to checking this out. Let's see it. Hey, hey man. What's up, man? Hey, how you doing? I'm good, buddy. How about you? I'm great. It's nice to meet you. Yeah, dude. I'm glad I finally caught your uh, live show there. It's oh, cool. thanks. Hey, uh, I'm going to comment on your background. I love the stone wall, man. That's oh, awesome. Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. Where, where, where are you? Uh, what state are you coming from? So I'm in Asheville, North Carolina. Oh, Asheville. It's beautiful yep. there. For some reason, your video signal just got scrambled. So Did it? Yeah, yeah. Let's see. Okay. Is that um, better? Ash no, it's not. Uh, uh oh. Yeah, it's, mm. it's weird. It, it, it actually looks like you're on the other side of uh, some Venetian blinds, kind of. Weird. So do me a favor. Drop out and then come okay. back. You know, hit the leave studio button and then come back in. Okay. All right, man. All right, cool. All right, bye. bye. So Asheville, uh, North Carolina. That well, that's uh, Jim's. That's some of Jim's uh, territory too. He's from the great state of North Carolina. Uh, I went to a wedding there one New Year's Eve, and it was warm. Um, 
man, what a cool town Asheville is. Nestled in the mountains, full of creative people and great beer. Uh, I remember having lunch. It was like it was like one of the few moments to break away from all of the goings on at our friend's wedding. And I went out to lunch with my wife at this nice little brewery. I had the whole menu on a chalkboard. It was awesome. And uh, what a beautiful spot up there. Native Chief in S9DV. Hey, Shane, great to have you here as always. But how cool is that? The Native Chief in S9DV. Hey, Joe, great to have you here. Best Tech Samurai. Now that's the uh, Sham, Sham, oh, Shamori, Shamori. <laughs> Am I mispronouncing? Okay, is that the knife uh, designed by uh, a Cones? Is that a Cones craft, that, that really cool one? Hey, Alex, how's it going, sir? It's always a pleasure to see you and to, well, to see your name anyway. Thanks for stopping in and saying hi. Kane, good evening, all. Kane, great to have you here in that, that cool wolf footprint, I think it is. Got my Oz Roosevelt in hand. Very cool. My newest acquisition and Jason Guthrie Arrow. Nice. Um, that Roosevelt is a, is a knife that I'm, I, I'm fascinated by. It, it it snuck up on me. It's not the 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 knife I would usually gravitate towards, but I'm finding myself really gravitating towards that. And I saw that uh, Nick Stasa uh, Stasa 23 loves that knife. I think he said it's his favorite in his collection. John's got the Civivi Keen Nader and the Civivi Kiwi. I'm not sure what that Kiwi is, uh, but the Keen Nader is a cool one. Weird name. But that's something we've come to expect. At least it's not a number. Alex, I've stopped buying knives and moved to watches. Oh, my goodness. What are you doing, man? What are you doing? I love it. I'm going to live vicariously through you. But wow. Hey, Slicey, great to have you here. Sorry I'm late. Was recording voiceovers and couldn't make words. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, good to have you here, Brian. Uh, I don't know if you just caught Alex's last comment, but he said he quit buying knives so that he could buy watches. What do you think about that? Is he going down a deep, dark hole with no bottom? Ezekiel says, we've got the B-Dad mission for today, and it's a 12-inch fixed blade cleaver. Ooh, quarter inch thick. I like it. I like it. Oh, that sounds great, man. B dad. What's that? Or D bad. All right. We'll talk about that in a second. Thanks for, for catching up. Scott, how's it going, man? I'm good, man. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Great. Can you see me now? I can see you. I don't okay. know what happened before, but yeah, yeah suddenly you, oh shit. It happened again, man. Damn. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I have I don't... no idea, man. I may have to try another night, man. That sucks. All right. Well, wait, do you have a, a, you know what? Try on a different device, but it's weird. It's like five seconds in and it, and it, it does this. I'd love to talk to you and find out that see this damn knife. All right, let's do it. Let's do it like this. Drop out, come yeah. back in and immediately show the knife just in case it, it goes, uh, it goes okay. bonkers again. All and, right, then, man. and then at least we'll have, we'll have the image burned into our eyes. All right. Sorry, dude. I'll do All that right. right now. Hey, then. no problem, man. All right, buddy. All right. All right. Talk to you in a minute. All right, peace. All right. Take care. Yep. Just bought the... Uh, oh, okay. Just bought a titanium G-Shock Square. Very dangerous. That is cool. Yeah, I saw you posing that with... with um, uh, uh, a Rockstead. That was pretty sweet. Very, very nice. And yeah, very dangerous, right? I mean, watches, they're, they get up there quick. Quack, the knife box channel. That's dangerous territory you're in. I know. I mean, that's, that's what we've heard. That's, that's what, uh, that's what Brian always talks about carrying the American Blade Works model one version six. I have my model one version five right here. Those sixes were sweet. I was checking them out at blade show, man. They really, uh, I mean, he took a great knife and really did put the, put the finishing touches on it i'd say i'd say he doesn't need a version seven i'd say uh you know make a new design this is such a great knife peter says today i was playing with a zeba s1 it was the angry bird edition cool and the ugliest clip i've ever seen beautiful knife but that clip that clip is kind of cool and and uh i think alex has one of those or used to um i think the clip is kind of cool oh look at that Oh, beautiful. Is that titanium? 
sculpted yeah, titan. God, yep. that's gorgeous, man. The opening hole is a very cool shape, too. Thank you. Oh, man. And the recurve blade. Oh, dude, I love it. Thanks, man. So uh, tell us. Work. Yeah, yeah. Tell us about. So your your screen went out, but for a minute, just tell us about the construction of that. Uh, so, yeah, it's just titanium. And um, I don't have a kiln, so it's just like high carbon steel. Uh -huh. And um, it took a long time, but just did it in my spare time as much as I could. And here we are. It's got good action. I don't know if you can still see me. Can you? I can't. Okay. Yeah. So right. my first folder, it was a little rough, but this one's got really good action. It feels, feels really good. So I'm really proud of it. So uh, bef before you go, uh, you're, you're giving it to your friend, you said? Yep. His birthday was today. So I'm like, he's like the only friend that's actually interested in like my knife stuff, you know, besides people like on social media and stuff. So All right. Try and, to uh, I mean, that's an amazing gift because he's going to have, you know, uh, an original. Do you have a, a name for your company? Uh, yeah. Or so I, I, it was Sleepy Gap Knives, but I'm pretty new. So I'm actually changing it um, like because I'm going more with like tactical folders. So uh -huh. I think I'm going to go with Edgy Blade Works. Edgy Blade Works. Nice. Edgy. Yeah. Yep. So yeah. Jim, Jim just put up a, uh, a graphic saying, I'll be your friend. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man. So I, I've got to I've got to get better at posting on uh, social media and stuff. I've been really bad about that. But um, yeah, if you want to look me up on that Scott Stills on Instagram, I'll start posting some more stuff up there. Everybody's kind of on my ass to do that. So S Scott Stills, all one word. Uh, man, I think so. Okay. Well, <laughs> I'm uh, terrible. It, I'm terrible on the Instagram stuff. But doesn't yeah, matter. You'll find it'll, me. it'll it'll pop up. There's literally yeah. probably two or three posts on there, so it's you'll yeah it'll stick out. All right. Well, I'll 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 sign up and I'll join, and uh, that'll be a reminder to start putting up pictures. Actually, Instagram is fairly easy. Once once you uh, figure out the hashtags you want, uh, or you're always going to be using, just put them on a note on your phone and just copy and paste them in there, so you don't have to deal with all that uh, yeah. type, all yeah, that typing. And yeah, uh, I like it. yeah. Oh man, that's great. I'm cool. I'm very impressed with that, and I can't wait to see more. Awesome. I appreciate it, man. Our pleasure. And you know all what? Right. Uh, uh, jump try and jump on next week and we'll we'll see if we get a better better picture all right sounds good man Take all right easy. cheers all man. Right. take care all right. All right, peace. Bye. man alive he made that in his spare time that is awesome uh boy that that uh that that makes me feel terrible about not being able to finish up a uh just a fixed blade that's been sitting around forever Stooley J, great to have you. Today's carry was a classic Spider Co. The Balance, still a favorite. Balance. Oh, oh, is that the one with the uh, different colored skin? I don't remember what the balance is. Um, oh, here we go. So these are some pictures of Scott Stills. Thank you, Jim, for pulling those up. I'm noticing. Uh, I'm noticing a theme. They have a, a cool shape to them. They have a. They have a unique. Sort of, ooh, ooh, I like the karambit, man. That is nice. Ah, it's exciting. It's exciting to see knife knife people just diving in and and making, making, producing things with their hands. I love that. Um, I need to do more of that because, I don't know, it feels good. It feels good to do. I've been eyeing that camo tie for a while, one day. Oh, oh, okay. Like he had on his, uh, yeah, nice. Scott N., have you carried the Ritter fixed blade yet? I'm going to talk about the Ritter fixed blade in a little while, and I have, and it's awesome. I used it, well, I'll talk. Stay tuned, Scott. First, I want to talk a little bit about, speaking of Rudy Van Poppel, I just picked up a Fox TFG edition Goody Van Poppel Eastwood Tiger S90V Titan Gray Stone Wash. I'm going to have to look that up uh, in a minute. So Titan, Fox and Van Poppel. That'll, that'll get me there. I love, I love his designs. Redacted. Great to have you here. Kaiser infinity in my Carta for me today. Ooh, nice. Uh, Kaiser. I, I still love their stuff uh, though. This last couple of years, Maybe maybe a little bit less. Um, 
because they've been trending a little bit smaller and you know uh carrying the xm18 slicer and protect calmigo currently awesome and awesome i love those little calmigos today's theme carrying small 20 cv bug out kaiser domin or domin uh spider co mcbee and the eldris nice and that honeybee lives on the keys and the honeybee lives on the keys what does that mean the honeybee lives on the keys oh does that mean you just keep it on your computer i know someone else is gonna be like no bob duh and then they'll explain it to me no she wouldn't watch if i paid her <laughs> good good everyone needs a readout everyone needs a little uh place they can they can um escape to and <laughs> that's so funny carried the native chief because i'm living large as i am excellent excellent shane i love that the native chief is so cool wish i didn't give mine away carried the lion steel cur metamorphosis with titanium g-shock camo oh, 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 oh okay that's what that's what guac was uh quack was referring to awesome kershaw dividend with composite blade Ooh, that's cool hey Kiefer, how's it going great to have you here sir I've got uh, I've I've got the goods right over here. Haven't framed it yet though. I will. They will go on the wall of fame. I love those composite blades. So, question for you guys tonight. Shane Gables, Grateful Panic needs our help. His GoFundMe link is on his IG. What's going on with What's going on with Grateful Panic? John, what's going on with him? Is he all right? I mean, obviously he's not all right, but is his What's up? Let us know. Uh, yeah, we should do something. He's such a cool guy. The Kiwi is the little Kiridashi. Mm, 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 I love a Kiridashi. Here, here's a little Kiridashi right here. I know a little German. He's standing right over there. Does anyone know what movie that's from? Does anyone know what movie that's from? You might have to be as old as I am to know. The Kiwi is Savivi's new micro slip joint. So cool. Here's a little Kiridashi. Compliments of... Mike Emler, that's very, very sharp. Very nice, Scott. I can clearly see you spent a lot of time on it. Oh, talking about that beautiful knife, man. I love that. Scott has some skills. Well done, man. Yeah, and that's only his second knife. Jeez, man. That's guys like that that make you feel like a lazy a lazy slob. Very cool, Scott, says, say, say the guys at Shredder. Um, yeah, do let me know what's going on with uh, Grateful Panic. And, uh, well... If 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 this is not the forum, go check out his Instagram and find out. And put it that way. All right. So, question of the night: Can a knife be over designed? And if so, let me know which one you think is over designed. Now, uh, I I alluded to the fact that this one, the giveaway knife, one might say is over designed, or this. And now, the reason I'm saying these are not is because I really, really love these knives. Uh, but it is a question to ask because, um, well, basically, Kershaw, to me, has gone down this road. And it's it's like an overcompensating road. It's like, um, it's like an overcorrection for boredom. Instead of just making slightly cooler knives, they've gone out of their way to make ultra-sweet and cool knives. And in doing so, Hmm, seem to have added too much. Um, Shane says, Grateful Panic has had an unexpected layoff. Oh, shit. And got turned down for unemployment. What the? He and his daughter need our help. That's, how do you get, uh, that's terrible. I, I'm, I'm very sorry to hear that. And that hits close to home, having daughters, man. Uh, I'm very, I'm very sorry to hear that. So uh, if you have the means, uh, help out grateful panic he's a he's a great member of the of the knife community and just an awesome open guy so so check that out that's a that's a that's a harsh blow man that's a harsh blow especially when you have the government just like shoving money in some people's faces i never got any of those stimulus checks and i'm not some rockefeller i'm not sure why i never got mine but i have friends who got two of them you know and they keep talking about you know how people are staying home and not going to work because 
because they get money in the mail. Like, I don't understand what's going on. Overdesigned like slip joints. What are you talking about, incognito? No, I'm talking about overdesigned like, like, here's one. Now, I love this knife. You know I love this knife. But some might consider, I'm going to put this under the knife cam. Some might consider this overdesigned because of all the choils. Oh, shit, the knife cam has gone blotto. Lost the phone. Damn. All right, well, I'm going to hold this up for now, and then I'll get back to it. Something's going on with my, my knife cam. You may have noticed. Uh, and I did an update, and I fully charged it, and I don't know what's going on. I got to figure that out. Uh, and I will, I will get to it in a moment. See this? See pretty much the entire Reich catalog. I didn't even think of right. Reich. Reich. Peter, you're exactly right. Overdesigned through the nose. Now, maybe one or two you could tolerate because it's like uh, audaciously engineered, just overly, overly artistically engineered. But at a certain point, it's like, good, good Lord, man. How many elements do you need? Appreciate you guys checking me out. Threw me off with the picture going out, but it was cool showing off my knife for a couple of seconds anyway. <laughs> Yeah, well, Scott, uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. And uh, um, it was really cool to see. And I'm having camera troubles myself. I'm going to try and casually take care of uh, while while we do this. But um, everyone, I don't know if you were able to see, but you got a lot of compliments. So um, I, I think people are excited for your work and keep jamming it. You know, Scott, that's Scott Stills. Check him out on Instagram. Uh, Jim pulled up his page. And he's he's got seven or eight pictures on there, but he swore this very same night that he's going to start populating his page with his cool, cool pictures. Professor EDC, great to have you here, sir. Bob, Jim, everyone, sorry to be late, still recovering, but I hope everyone is doing well. Well, we hope you're doing well, Professor EDC. Um, you know, uh, all good vibes coming your way from up north. I be free, good to have you here. The largest spot is one of my favorite knives and one of my favorite knives. Um, so when I say over-designed, doesn't necessarily mean it's a diss. Hey, James, great to have you here. Uh, James posted the what I what I presume to be the coolest and best-looking Andre Thorburn knife I've seen. And uh, I've I've said before, very unpopularly, excuse me, while I get the knife cam back up, I have said very unpopularly in the past that I have. Massive respect for Andre Thorburn, but something about his designs uh, didn't exactly do it for me. But that uh, front flipper that you were showing off on Instagram the other day, wow, that really did. That really did do it for me. So let's see. Let me make sure. Yep. Oh, no, that's not the view we want. Son of a gun. Hang on. All right. We're going to do this. We're going to do this the hard way. I'm going to talk and I'm going to do this at the same time. Uh, so, hello. Knife Junkie. I'm going to do this. This is what you should be doing. Go to the knifejunkie.com slash join. And that'll take you right to the StreamYard page. Join. With an N. And... Uh, and then set it up, and then you're good to go. Uh, so let me know about overdesigned knives, people. Let me know what you think. Um, I, I say the entire 2021 Kershaw catalog is overdesigned. It's one of my little pet pet uh, kvetches I like to go off on. But uh, why does it keep coming to me? I, oh, okay, I see. I see. <laughs> Sorry, little little dumbass moment there. All right, let's get this mounted. He said mounted. So I saw a hilarious video today, meme, I guess. And it was, uh, let's see, let's see. That's good enough for rock and roll. There we go, kind of. All right, that's going to have to do. Um, saw a great meme today. It was from Return of the Dragon, uh, where um, Bruce Lee... And uh, and Chuck Norris are preparing for their big fight, and they're ta <laughs> they're taking off their their shirts and their gi tops and everything, and uh, and it's playing George Michael's Careless Whispers, and it says, uh, you know, 
the difference music can make. And it's really hilarious. Look it up. Incognito. No, 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 no. It's not. Uh, it's, it's not. It has a lot of choils because of reach. And it's the most beautiful blade Cold Steel ever made. I have the G10 XL, which is one of my car knives. Nice. Besides the OD green bug. Eye. Okay. No, no, no. I get it. I, I understand the reason for it. Believe me. I do. It's for reach. It's for versatility. You have, uh, you have, you know, you can have your hand here. I'll do it with this hand way up here. You can have it back here. This is my favorite grip using the sub hilt between my pinky and my, and my, uh, but, or you can come back here. I know I get it. I get it. But, but in looking at it, one could say that that's over designed in looking at the giveaway knife for next week. One could say that that's that's over designed and maybe i'm mistaking the words over designed for stylized overly stylized now to me this is a a really good looking knife so of course i'm gonna say oh that's not over designed but i could see how someone would look at it be like what's up with the handle and what's up with this little tiny swedge and what's up with the full belly and all this and and the what really brought it home to me was this choil it is a great sharpening choil, uh, but it is, um, and great by great, I mean size-wise, it is a, a, a large sharpening choil. But if you look, it comes right up to the G10, so hopefully that's not an issue. And it's not big enough to put your finger in. So it's a, it's a visual flourish. Now, are visual flourishes, you know, uh, too many? Are they too many? Um, for instance, well... I've, I've brought that up. I've beaten that horse to death. Uh, one might say this is over-designed, uh, a knife that is new to me that I absolutely love. But, uh, you know, you got the full fuller there. You got all the milling on the side. You've got the unique clip with the milling. You've got the the uh, extra cool pivot with the, with the logo for Crystal there, or Crystal, however you pronounce it. Um, one could say that this is a bit overdone. Now, I say uh, in a lot of cases, overdone suits me just fine. Um, but I'm just curious what if okay, if you don't if you don't accept the the framing of the question or the concept at all, imagine that you do and then tell me what that knife would be. The guys at Shredder say would definitely say there are some fixed blades that are over designed. They put so much shapes and such, of uh, shapes and such in the blades that I feel it weakens the blades and they basically become show knives. Interesting. Uh, like a fantasy blade, for instance, like something from Gil Hibben once he kind of stopped being serious. <laughs> I hate to, I hate to diss a legend, but uh, you know, he used to make some really cool knives. Agreed on the Thorburn. Excellent. Excellent. See, I knew I had some. Uh, incognito says the cold steel tiger claw is overbuilt rather have the fox karambit interesting and uh, that tiger claw has a very long handle i feel like no one has a hand that big but i maybe i just have small hands uh gav's dad says uh scott says ha will do uh needed a little push to share my work really enjoy your channel and thanks for letting me on take it easy oh dude any time and not just to Scott, not just if you have a, a knife that you've just made that you want to show off. Say you have a knife you just bought that you want to show off. Say you just want to meet me and say hi. Uh, that would be great. I'd love to see you. Would love to meet you. 18 likes. Really? Hey, like, like, hit the like button. Uh, or maybe you're all watching on Twitch or Facebook because we're live on Twitch and Facebook. Alex Baker says, well, first of all, hello, Alex. Great to have you here. Kershaw's excessive detail on handles is too futuristic without anything great, but the SR1, oh man, pretty sweet. If I needed something that big, uh, well, maybe you do, man. Maybe you need to have it just in case it comes up that way, uh, but have to have such a beast to carry seems fun. Well, it is. It is having a big blade is is a great thing. A big folder is is awesome. But I'm with you on on Kershaw, and and it's not just the handles with all of their little openings and shape, you know, sh milled in shapes and and kind of meaningless little holes and such. 
but also the blades. It's like the the blades have an extra, you know, there's something with the with the swedges and the harpoons on the last batch of Kershaws that just I don't know. You know what? I'm going to I'm going to start remembering some model names so that I can be specific. I should have I should have perhaps done that for this conversation because I was thinking of Kershaw at the time. I was thinking about the crystal, uh, the uh, Aurora. I was thinking about the steel will and then and then the uh, maybe we'll, we'll we'll take this out since it's so polarizing. Um, but here's an here's a perfect example of a knife that is not over designed. Boom. It may it may have taken him a while to get to his final iteration of it, but when you look at the design of it, it is knife. Right? It is knife. This is Crystal Aurora, and this is the Arcturus, and this is knife version five. It really is. And and that to me is a compliment because I, I really love his work. I really love that knife in particular. Uh Quack says regarding Kurt regarding Kershaw. I'm reminded of what Les George said in your interview with him. He said one of their designers told him, I got to go home and design Kershaw six more knives that I ate. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Oh, my God. I mean, I got to say that would be a great problem to have. Um, but then again, you know, the grass is always greener. I guess maybe I would just love to design the knives I love by Les George and have them be knives that I made. The CFK Deception is way over designed. Oh, Decepticon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Yeah. What about Elijah Isham? Like, our, our, so the Decepticon is is audaciously so. And in, in a way, the Decepticon is more of a proof of proof of concept knife or a you know a proof of engineering type type knife. You know what I mean? They just want to show that they could do it. Yeah, you're right though. That is way of Elijah Isham. Very nice guy, making producing some really cool knives. Some of them, though, yeah, some of them are over designed. Some of them, like the little that little slippy, that little Bowie slippy he made, are just outstandingly gorgeous. And then others are just too much for me. But maybe that just means I'm getting old. It's like it's too loud, and I can't understand what they're saying. You know, like that's like the classic thing to say about rock and roll. You know. So maybe that's me. Maybe I'm getting up there now. Blade Ogre says, would having a thumb stud, a flipper, and a button lock on the same knife be over-designed? If so, the Kaiser sway back. I like it. <laughs> yeah, but it's too busy with all those opening mechanisms. That's funny. That's the sway back by, um, by uh, sharp and pointy swags, right? Or, or just swags. Uh, I know what you mean. And, and I would say if you added a... Um, here, okay, uh, the um, the flipper version of any Emerson knife, because they have they have the I'll, I'll take advantage of the knife cam while it's still with us, because you have the inevitable wave, almost inevitable. You have the thumb opening disc, and then you have the flipper tab, and on the Emersons, the flipper tab hangs down way low. And so, yeah, that's a lot. That's kind of over-designed. Yeah, with, without, without being um, tasteless in the handle or anything, it's all pretty tasteful, but just too much. Too much. Actually, uh, I saw someone, I can't remember who it is now, uh, someone on Instagram took their CQC7 flipper and modded it and, and really shortened the flipper and made the, the bottom contour of it parallel with this contour, this sort of slightly curved contour here. And it looked so cool, so much better than the original. And I am not second guessing Mr. Ernest Emerson, but at the same time, I think what this, how this guy modded it, who was it? Was it uh, uh, that fella there? I don't think so. Cause he's only carrying one knife for a whole year now. Um, so, so I feel like someone who comes on the show sometimes, but anyway, uh, Poncho 151 says, I could see the argument that the AD15 is over designed. Interesting. Uh, I love it, but the lock really isn't necessary considering the AD10 has superior lock and predates the AD15. Well, there is a practical aspect to that, though, because uh, 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 Andrew Demko could only produce the um, 
triad lock while he's working, you know, in his own custom work while he's working for cold steel. And, uh, you know, so he needed to have, well, first of all, he's got a, he's got one of those minds that's always kind of innovating and thinking of the next new lock, the next new thing, but also he needed something else that he could go to once cold steel was a thing of the past for him. Now he cannot make the AD 10, uh, because the AD 10 has the triad lock. He can't make that lock anymore. And, uh, incidentally, it doesn't matter because the AD or the uh, triad lock is a real pain in the ass to make, uh, as as they say as the brothers demco have revealed um and now they make this it's so cool the shark lock but i see what you mean about about the uh, ad15 you know that's not one that stuck out to me because it's not like it has a bunch of extra stuff on it but i i do get what you mean you know it, it's a it's a I, i'm gonna have to think on that one for a while Ryan says the Spiderco Sliverax. Yes, that is a totally, totally over. You know, like they almost had me with that knife. They almost had me because it's got that uh, CQC eight blade, though it's still a great piece. Piece, he says. It has that uh, that curved clip point blade, like the CQC eight. It's got a uh, flipper, and then it's got the. Um, kind of half whole half um wave feature on it and then this is this is where they just went too far this is this was a a, a bridge too far they put excuse me they put the little round spider co hole in the blade right next to the almost full hole that they used circular hole that they used for the um for the manual opening and the um and the wave are, are you following me yeah i totally i would agree with you north code 100 percent. that knife is over designed and and it's a shame well it's good for me um because i never had to buy it and and i do mean had i never had to buy it because it had just just one too many notes shane says that new reich is over designed and and like someone else mentioned like all reichs are over designed um Joe, uh, knife whisperer had one for a little while. I think he got rid of it, but yeah, just like, you know, it looked like an organism. Sean says Russian hardware starting to pique my interest. Yeah, well, I suggest, well, you know, uh, I, I don't know, Sean, I don't know what exactly what your tastes are. Cause so there are a lot of great, you know, sure. Gorovs. I I've never had one. I would love to have a sure Gorov. Um, that's one of those things that I never really think to, gee, I have uh, 800 spare bucks in my pocket. Let me go look for a Shiro. I just, that hasn't happened yet. Um, but I would love to have one of those, but check out, uh, check out some of the knives that Levon is uh, Levon of the knife nuts podcast. You can find him on Instagram very easily. Uh, he's been importing these cool crystal brand knives designed by Ivan Braganets and, uh, this model and several others that are just cool and uh, a, a custom, ver not a custom, but an exclusive version of the Rokat. Very cool knife. Check it out. Check him out if, if you want to dip your toes because they're more affordable than some of the other more premium like custom knife factory knives or the Shirogorov knives. Incognito says, I consider over-designed if there's something on the knife that's useless. For example, if a cold steel mini tough light has an Espada handle, I consider it over-designed because there's no reason to have it. I got you. I got you. It's like that that little hole on the sliver axe. And by the way, the name sliver axe. Uh, but but yeah, that it's it's overnamed. It's an over-designed name. But but having that hole in there is just like, yeah. Okay, we get it. We know you're a spider co. Come on. Come on. Just this once, spare us the round opening hole. I know you own the circle, but just this once. Shane says, everything by District 9 knives is over-designed. Yeah, District 9, uh, 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 some of you will disagree with me here. Um, Kivo? Kivo? Revo. Revo knives are a little bit over-designed. Uh, very nice guys. I met them. Uh, met one of the guys. Uh, hey, Bryce, what's up, dude? Great to have you here, man. Uh, let us know what over-designed knives you think there are. Uh, those Revo knives, 
like two opening holes right next to each other that kind of are concurrent, but but our parallelograms and all that, uh, even the grinds on that Tanto of, of the Revo, it's just a little too much. And yeah, I know what you're saying. Ah, yeah. Nearing midlife, are we, huh? Well, yes, I do plan to live till 100. Quack says quartermaster designs are the ones that come to mind, especially their general Lee model, but the lock is cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know which one you're talking about. The General Lee. And, and yes, everything they ever did, except for that one that was a hot EDC for a, a short while. And it was um, designed by someone else. It was designed, and I can't remember who it, who it is or what it was called. Kershaw Bare Knuckle is always a great one. Designed well. I miss the Kershaw ZT era. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, ZT, uh, you know, the 308. I really would like to get a 308 i've decided and now that i've seen some of the really awesome handles uh handle scale work they do over for um the exclusives over at uh, usa made blade there's almost no excuse to get a 308 jared says i feel like knives that have one uh, i'm sorry i feel like knives that one may deem as over designed suck as the strata can be gateway purchase for future knife junkies My, yeah, 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 yeah. may introduce someone to a new knife new knife god i can't read tonight may introduce someone new to the knife community well the strata the strata i feel like they avoided the pitfalls that i'm talking about uh it is almost over designed but um i don't know i don't know i i, I do i do like that one Hey, it's great to have you here. Did you change your name, Yvonne's knife addicted life, knife addict life, knife addict life? Jeez, man. I, I feel like you changed your name. Did you? Or am I just used to looking at that picture? I think I'm used to your picture. How about the Riot Jack 2.0 pivot? The whole thing, the whole thing, and, and the whole concept, too much. I, you know, it reminds me, it almost cheapens it. It reminds me of those, um, those, knives with the removable blades that cold steel is making or that you can get at dick's sporting goods you know chicago 23 great to have you here the new j cave oh j cape something obscene company is that what you're carrying or do you think that that's over designed uh, I, I do like the j cape how about the best example of over design is the lion steel tie dust 3d print ed hollowed scales cost 1300 from years ago now i don't know which one that is tie dust well i'm sure others here do uh we'll have to look that one up hang on tie dust uh isham designs look out there yeah oh but they're amazing to use you know uh the one what's the recent one that we has been has been back pushing again um yeah i guess i'm sure it's awesome to use uh look out there but oh okay he says shane says they look out there but they're good to use gotcha uh james the Riot jack 2 is almost silly still cool but right on the cusp yeah it's it is a concept knife it is a, a proof of concept or look we can make this and I get it. I, I understand why a company wants to do that. Um, but yeah, it's a little bit like that. I feel like too much thought went into the Spyderco Phoenix. <laughs> too much thought. Or maybe it was uh, designed by committee. That's another thing, man. Uh, you know, I work in a creative field. And I, I always kind of make sure that my clients that I produce videos for, it's always one person. It, like it has to go through a bottleneck. Because if you get a group of people in, uh, you know, to review a video, everyone needs to feel like they're being useful. So everyone has a suggestion. Suddenly you have a list of things that don't need to be changed, but everyone in the room wanted to say something. wanted to wanted to seem like they were paying attention. And so, oh, yeah, I was paying attention here. Uh, you need to change this graphic. No, I don't. You know, I don't. Uh, Alex Steingraber bought a CNC lookout for future for the folder for folders in the future. Oh dude, I cannot wait. I, I really love my, uh, my Steingraber shark. Such a great knife, man. He'll, he'll just be knocking them out now. 
There are customs that are every type of Damascus, Timascus, Mokutai, with swoops and sweeps everywhere. It's dizzying. I'd call that over-designed. Yes. Um, uh, uh, Ryan, Ryan, uh, can't remember his name. Uh, someone's coming to mind right now. There are a bunch of custom knives that come to mind. Um, uh, who's the guy who, uh, whose logo is kind of like a, um, uh, hazmat symbol. He, his stuff is really cool. I really like it, but yeah, it's like, it's like, well, what do you even do with that blade? Nothing beats the lion steel tie dust over designed over anything else you guys are describing. All right. I got to see what this thing is. Let me look this up. Lion steel tie dust. Uh, 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 tie dust. So you go to images. E gads. Ugh. Yeah, I see what you mean. Ugh. I mean, it looks actually, it looks like it was designed for the hand. You know, it looks like it might be comfortable, but holy mackerel. It's like they made that knife to just be a pain in the ass to make so that they could charge 1300 euro for it. Holy mackerel. But that's interesting. That's interesting, Alex, because it's not overtly over designed in that if you looked at just its um, silhouette and and say that those all those holes were filled in, you'd say, oh, it's just a regular knife and it kind of has a lion steel look to it. But then, yeah, look at that. It's like a, a cage. Alex, I was happier before I went and looked at the tie dust. <laughs> <Bleh>. <laughs> yeah. I was a happier person. I didn't need to know that fact. I didn't need to see that. That's a, that's yeah. Yeah. Overdesigned. I mean, it's not, obviously it's, it's a first world problem, but it comes up every now and again, I'll look at something and I'll just think, you know, what's the point? Yes. No more circles in the spider coast. Yeah. I mean, you know, if you, if you need it to open the knife, that's cool. And that's a great thing to stick with, but here, Here's a perfect example on the street Bowie. Yep, gotta have the circle. Gotta have it doesn't lighten the blade. Doesn't doesn't do anything but be a circle. It's like I get it. I get it. You own the circle. Someone su suggested I check out Crudo knives. Pretty horrendous stuff. That's funny. Uh, we we showed off some some of the new Crudo knives uh, last week on uh, Knife Life News, and. Uh, yeah, I always had a sort of love hate with those with those knives. Um, they're they're hand not handmade, but they're they're pretty expensive and they're small batch. But but they've never been um, made with very much blade, very good blade steel or the kind of blade steel that you expect to get on a two hundred dollar knife or whatever. So they're they've sort of changed tack a little bit and they're um, they're they're bringing the price down and changing things a little bit, but I, I hear you uh, on the over design front. They, it might just be too many notes on each one. Kershaw. Have you seen CRKT lately? Ugh, a wild design aesthetic mixed with old engine, <laughs> engine part materials. Hmm. Yeah, I got, okay. So I, I, I got to do my research on them too. Uh, hang on. Just bear, bear with me. Oof. CRKT. 21 let's just see what what pops up oh, i gotta say i do like the ritual but that's that's kind of you know a fantasy knife but uh yeah 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 i guess i see what you mean there shane says all that said i love over designed knives i'm a man child well yeah you know um there is some of that now uh the reason i thought of this initially i was thinking about neutral handles like this very neutral handle versus um well you know heavily heavily choiled handles that's not the right term but um like this and what's preferable now a knife this big you can turn it around in your hand and use the oh shit <laughs> i just cut the foam but you know uh do do this sort of all these different hand grips but that's because it's so big and it gives you all that space but if this were a smaller and a regular sized knife, you know, with a four inch handle or something like that, you, you are locked in. 
And in a way, that's good because if you're using this dangerous tool, you want to be locked in. But at the same time, it reduces versatility, you know, majorly. And then I, I started thinking about all those other uh, Kershaws and such. Isham makes art knives, which happen to work and work well. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that art knives kind of get a pass. There's a gentleman I'm going to be interviewing sometime in August or September um, that I met at Blade Show, and I was drawn into his knives. Or like Chuck Gadritis, his art knives. They're awesome. They're functional, and they're awesome. Yes, they're over-designed, but in a great way. Uh, River Steel Blades, look look him up on, on Instagram. Just cool-ass knives and some innovation going on there, too. Um, so I look forward to talking to him. Chicago 23 says over design too much Damascus. Damascus to me needs a plain handle. Like just that's how I see it. Now, my birthday knife that I described before has a Damascus blade and a stag handle. So there's going to be some patterning there, there, you know, uh, but I'm definitely, uh, you know, want to avoid the Mr. Furley issues with the, with the too many patterns next to each other. But, uh, uh, and then there's under design C chisel grind, Peter chisel grinds, chisel grinds are awesome. They are awesome. Here's one for you. I'll see myself out. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> uh, I, I do like chisel grinds quite a bit. You know, I love these uh, Emersons. Uh, but it's always a thrill to get one that's fully chisel ground, like where it's flat on one side and you really do have a chisel. Now, the one thing about the Emerson chisel grinds, unless you get the tactical elements exclusives, or I think there are a couple of other exclusive uh, versions, it's set up for left-handed use, really, because the show side... You know, he wants the show side to have the name and the bevel and to look like this. But really, if you're right handed, you want that flat side on the other side um, so you can get right up next to your material. Um, so <laughs> uh, it's funny. Uh, Nick Miller. Hey, Nick. Good to have you here. Some stuff from Elijah Isham can be a little overdone. However, he has kind of made up that a part of his style. No doubt. No doubt. And uh, and. And it's not just complicated to be complicated. I mean, he's an artist uh, working in the medium of knife design. And you can also, and he's got a style, like you're saying here. And by style, I mean, you can tell it's an Isham knife. Even when he's, um, you know, attempting the vanilla, you can see, you can tell like that that cool little uh, uh, slip joint I was talking about, the one that's uh, the double detent slip joint with the, sweet clip point blade. I knew right away that was an Isham and it doesn't look like anything else he's done. My wife's kitchen mandolin is over designed when it comes to cutting off a fingertip. Man alive. Have I done that before? Uh, but this last time I used the mandolin, it was to, it was to make uh, fresh French fries. Um, I actually used the thing that comes with it, you know, that, that has the spikes on it and, and, you know, holds the thing and it worked perfectly. I don't, I don't know why I never did that before. I'm sorry, Jim. Can you go back to that last comment? I missed what handle looks at, uh, let's see. Uh, uh, my wife's kitchen. Oh, that was it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, that, that little holder thing really does work. Uh, it, you know, they all come with it. The handle looks like those crates in <laughs> the store you use for eggs. Yeah. Yeah. Or, um, milk crates that you steal from behind Seven Eleven or that we once did back in the day. How about the most over-designed knife is the quartermaster with the toggle lock? Yes, uh, someone just brought that up. The G General Lee, is that what it, that is? The quartermaster QTR11. Well, everything by them is over-designed. Do you guys know, does anyone here know Miller Brothers knives? I would have to say, and this is coming from a, a tactical knife lover, that their work is all over design, but in kind of a glorious road warrior, brutish kind of way. Do you guys know Miller Brothers? Uh, I met them uh, actually at, at uh, Blade Show, and I, I'd like to invite them on. They seemed kind of hesitant, um, but I'm still going to, I'll give it a try. They're doing stuff 
uh, kind of like Quartermaster. And the only reason I say that is that they have multiple thumb studs on their knives, but they are so ridiculously overbuilt and huge. Laughing my ass off. Bob assaulted his microphone live on YouTube with a folding, but we had, I did. I'm looking for the wound. I'm sure it left a giant wound channel. Ugh, such a gross term when people say that. Wound channel. Ugh. Smith & Wesson knives. Probably. Quack. Probably. Any gun company that makes knives unless they're using Hogue. Yeah. Probably. Max the Maker says, One knife that I have that's over-designed is the CRKT Nurk tie. It has two thumb holes and a flipper tab and a lockback. Okay, so... Brian Ty is another one who gets a pass as far as I'm concerned because it is 100% his style. And he's been around a while, uh, Brian Ty. All of his knives are, are over-designed. Um, in a, you know, like terrorist and, well, now that I think about it, maybe they aren't uh, because it doesn't seem like there's much that's too much extra um, it's just uh, complicated. Ah, it's hard to explain. It's hard to explain. There's not too much on a tie knife that's superfluous, except for the whole kind of uh, build of it. You know what I mean? It's not like, well, I don't know. I, I, you know what? Let me let me uh, reconsider this, and I'll get back to you on that. But I could I could see that. I could see you saying a tie is uh, over designed to go along with the pointless holes on Spiderco. Why does Emerson put waves on his fixed, <laughs> fixed blades and valley songs? There you go. I mean, that is a that <laughs> that is a thing. Now, one could argue uh, that that he's hearkening back to the original purpose of that, which was as a blade catch, you know. But he readily admits that as a blade catch, it is small and it is a an outdated, outmoded thing you know he put it on there when he was originally designing it for uh navy seal types and such but um you know even in the most choreographed of knife fights um very rarely does it happen uh that a knife ends up like this and that your hand doesn't get cut off because you caught it with that little knife catch so I would say that that is a design flourish. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. And 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 not for nothing, I believe personally, and it's just personal taste, that it works so much better on the fixed blade knives because it it's kind of a tip of the hat of some older uh, tip of the hat to some sort of older school knife designs. But <laughs> that's funny. Uh, I have the Vaquero, which I always try to brag about. But the only thing wrong with it is the handle design. All the crosses. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All the iron cross, that iron cross texturing is is a lot. It is a lot. Um, I always take off the hand, I take off the clip and sand down the handle. And the tie dust was clearly made on a dare. Yeah, it was one of yeah, it's one of those things, you know. Oh, yeah, you made that. Well, look at what we can make. Look at how many. How much titanium we can waste making this one. Shame the tie dust blade is gorgeous, but the spider web handle. Well, that tie dust uh, blade looks looks like a lion steel blade. I feel like there are others that have that similar sort of look. Lion steel always tries something new. And they did they've done a lot of I think they're the only people so far that have done the uh, have done an integral in aluminum. I mean, there's plenty of titaniums, but I think they're the only aluminum. Just like the over designers at Reich Knife, uh, Reich Knife made the uh, Integral G10. So it's not all bad. It's just a little much. All right, let me show you this. Someone else was asking earlier about uh, whether I whether or not I've carried the fixed blade Doug Ritter yet, the Mark the RSK Mark III, and yes, I had. And it was uh, last weekend, just this past weekend, this was my uh, go-to-town-in-the-back knife. Now, I was uh, couldn't attend to, to the property, my lawn back and front. I couldn't attend to it for 
two and a half weeks or three weeks because we went on vacation and then it was pouring and, you know, several things got in the way. Like I talk about all the time, the vine here, the vines, the Virginia creeper, the English ivy, and uh, what else do we have? Um, I can't remember the, the third one. They just go, oh, grapevine. They go crazy and they climb all of the trees and then they also climb the trees right over the fence in my neighbor's yard and they don't take care of their stuff at all. So I end up having to do that so that their tree doesn't get strangled out and fall onto my, onto my, uh, onto my house. Knife Joy should release it. <laughs> a tie dust in blue for $3,000. Shane, I think that's a great idea. I think you should work over there. Hey, what's up, Ryan? Great to have you here, man. Happy Thursday night knives to you, sir. We were talking about over-designed knives. But now I'm going to talk about one that's really well designed. Now, this this uh, this will be my... Uh, I, I intend on going hiking a lot more uh, because I've done a little bit of it this summer and spring and have really uh, gotten a lot out of it. I love it. I love... I love getting out in the woods. I do it rarely, except in my local park, which has nice woods and stuff. But I mean, exploring and doing fun stuff. So I've decided that this will be really, this is a great outdoors, um, small, light, fixed blade knife. Now, I used this this past week for all of my uh, outdoor chores, except for actually cutting the grass. Um, so devining and also trimming back some trees. We have, I don't know if you've ever had a mulberry tree, but they start like weeds and then they grow like weeds and they grow really fast. And we've got this mulberry tree that has kind of suddenly become giant. And it's also not on my property, but it's right on the corner of uh, where my property meets the neighbors. And it is, it's like grown directly over my driveway and it drops all of its mulberries and stuff. Anyway, uh, that is being strangled out by vines. So that that uh, trimming that tree and taking care of that tree is a twofold chore because I got to cut back the vines that grow. I swear to God, I got to put a camera out one of these years just to trail cam and and just so I can show how quickly these damn vines grow. It's like three weeks and it's like I haven't done any work. And uh, so I used this one and on uh, yesterday's podcast, I showed it off. Um, but I hadn't cleaned it. I just wanted to show the gunk on it. You know how sometimes knife reviewers will, will open up their knife and they'll be like, oh, gee gosh golly, I forgot how much I use my knives. I forgot to clean the tape off or whatever. Uh, so that's what I was doing with this. This thing is awesome. I I'm just going to come right out and say I really, really like this knife. Um, and, and one of the things that um, really resonates with me about this is that it's, um, well, let me put it this way. Most of the fixed blade knives I buy are, well, they're more like this, you know, I, I like this kind of knife. This is the kind of thing that tickles my fancy right here. Um, but getting this has been, uh, I don't want to say a revelation, but I, I'm like, yeah, it is good to have some knives that are more useful for my lifestyle. Of course, this is great when I have to go out and do night ops and sentry removal, you know, um, comes in handy for those chores. But for the real things I do, this is so good. It's just so good. So it's it's a pretty thin blade stock. Um, I'm sorry, I, I didn't measure it. Uh, it's Let's see. Let's compare it to the, the 80-20. It's thinner than the 8020 in blade stock. And it's very broad. It's what is this? An inch and a half broad, this blade. And it's almost a full height uh, um, flat grind. So it's just slicey as hell. And and the new relatively neutral handle. Here's a totally totally un -over designed knife. So this neutral handle is great. I, I find myself using this knife uh, and the outdoor knives that I use a lot like this because I'm reaching, grabbing, and then pulling and cutting stuff that way, vines and such. Limbs, light limbs. And this, uh, this was perfect. This was a great thing because uh, it was hot as hell and I had it on my hip. And first of all, it wasn't too big and dorky looking for the neighbors. Oh, there's Bob with his giant fixed blade. 
we're cutting the lawn. How is it that I can work in the lawn without a giant fixed blade? But Bob needs one. So in other words, it didn't attract attention. Not that anyone's watching me, but you know what I mean. Uh, and, uh, and it's light. So I could barely feel it. You know, it was like there when I needed it, but when it wasn't, it was a forgotten tool on my belt and uh, just sharp as hell and then thin and slicey. And I'm just, I'm digging it. Uh, Incognito says, I'm not used to seeing people saying they use a knife on yard work. I grew up where machetes uh, were used, which is how I found out cold steel, found cold steel in the knife community. Well, you know, I mean, they actually really do come in handy for certain things. I could be walking around, really. I mean, I could be walking around with one of those clippers, you know, and pruning, pruning shears and that kind of thing. And when I'm shaping bushes, of course, I use those those big long scissor things, pruning shears, or we had an electric one until I cut the cord uh, while trimming. That was fun. But uh yeah, for all of the de divining stuff, all of the limb trimming and stuff, yeah, I use a knife because what else am I going to, you know, I got these knives, I got to use them. And this one was actually just really great. And this is my first S45 VN uh, blade. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy to have it. I feel like a mature individual with this knife. Whereas with this one, I'm, I'm a little, uh, you know, I blush a little bit with this. I'm like, this is so cool. I bet the guys who really use these are, you know, it's a cool. Uh, but with this, I'm like, you know, it just, it's just a, a knife that makes sense for me to have and to use. So I've been really, really happy with this thing. And uh, I know Brian uh, Slicey has one. I'm not sure if he's still watching, but if you are, Brian, uh, let me know what you think about this knife. I know you're not generally much of a fixed blade guy but uh would you agree that this is pretty awesome i even like the um nylon sheath and ordinarily i just i would have gotten rid of this and and made a kydex sheath for it but the the uh nylon is great it's got a very rigid plastic insert like you can't squeeze it shut and a nice little detail here that you don't see in too many uh, nylon sheaths is that this plastic insert comes up above the the tree line here so that when you're putting it in you're not gouging it into your the nylon it's it's got a, a a sort of race right there that you can just put it in easily at first i thought the snap was a little ridiculously stout but uh you know opening it and closing it 20 some odd times uh it's it's now it's just you know perfect it's not going to undo itself i also love uh this strap setup so you can put it on your belt. Well, first of all, you can put it on your belt and straddle a, uh, a belt loop on your pants so it won't move around. That's a, a detail I always appreciate. Uh, but so you can take it off and, and put it on without having to uh, take your belt off. And then I think that this feature, you know, this unsnaps yet again. I think that that feature is for Molly compatibility, perhaps. I'm not sure. But a uh, very versatile sheath and uh, comes with a nice length of paracord and then one of these little things. I'm not sure what these little toggle switches are called, but tension thingy and uh, great knife. I'm really, really psyched about it. So if you're uh, wondering about it or on the fence about it or make sure I snap. I have a problem with the with the pull the dot snaps. Luckily, those are not pull the dot snaps. Uh, like I said or was about to say, if you're on the fence about it, don't be, get it. You'll love it. Yes. Okay. Hassam fixies are, are arts, are art that works over designed. Yes, but beautiful. I agree. I love, uh, uh, um, Hassam and also his son, Alex is making his, is making Jerry's designs or, oh, I mean, I spoke with him at blade show and talked to him a little bit. Uh, I think, I think he's doing his take on his dad's designs, but they look the same, you know, and the, and the, I used to really like the look of the handles, you know, that's one of the real, um, characteristic, uh, parts of the ha Hassam designs are those handles. And I just don't like the way they look. And when you hold them, they work and you got to hold them a certain way, but, um, yeah, that's kind of where they lost me. but. I love the beautiful blades. 
beautiful blades and very thinly ground. And by the way, Alex Hassam, Jerry's son, can make a knife. This dude, oh my God. I mean, well, he learned from his father, who's a master, but oh my God. I mean, such thin hollow grinds, even on like uh, double-edged uh, on swedges and stuff like that. Just amazing uh, control. Stooley J says, did anyone mention that weird mantis gearhead? Oh, everything mantis. Not sure if it's over-designed, but looks like it is. I'd say it is. If it looks like it is, it is. You know, if it quacks like a duck. And mantis, um, they're what they're a precursor uh, to... Uh, to quartermaster or somehow maybe owned by the same dude, Austin, something, something or other. Uh, so yeah, they have that same sort of overdone aesthetic The the HOA is not amused. Oh, the HOA is not amused by machetes. Yeah, I bet. Uh, luckily we don't have an HOA where I am We're probably like one of the few communities in my County that doesn't have an HOA. Uh, but yeah, they're not amused. Uh, that's not an approved lawn care tool. Um, I'm, we're going to have to go ahead and ask you to, to put up the machete. Redacted says, but wait, isn't a lawnmower really just <laughs> a powered fixed blade? That's right, man. That's right. <laughs> it, it is indeed. And I, I use it with, with authority. And Ty is a super nice guy. I got that impression. I got that impression. Uh, I've, 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 uh, if you know him, Peter, put in a good word for me. Cause I invited him onto the show and he agreed once and then and then I never heard from him. Um uh and I I I know he everyone's got stuff going on in, in their lives. I think he was caring for his, a family member at the time or something like that. But I would love to have Brian on the show and talk to him. He seems to be a really cool, cool guy and just a unique artist. So, Peter, if you have the inside track, please help me out. Scott N says, and I like su to support Ritter. Here's another, I agree, and I do too. And here's another way you can support Doug Ritter. He's resurrected an older design called the RSK Mark V. And here it comes in an Altoids or Sucrets, who's old enough to remember Sucrets, style tin here. Uh, RSK stands for Ritter Survival Knife. That's the, the moniker for like the, you know, the Hogue, the Griptilian, or the, you know, the griptilian style so uh doug ritter rsk mark five you open it up and then here is a little recipe for putting together a survival kit doug ritter besides knife rights is known for his uh survival company called equipped to survive and he's an aviator in a, in a past life i guess he's once an aviator always an aviator hel helicopter pilot and such and uh, he started this company, Equipped to Survive, uh, making uh, survival kits optimized for flight. And 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 so, anyway, this is a, um, you know, put a fire starter, put it, put some tinder, signal mirror, whistle, compass, duct tape, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, fishing hooks. And then inside is the knife, and it's the little Mark III. I'm sorry, Mark V. I keep getting those mixed up. So this is a knife that CRKT once made uh, for Doug Ritter. And he got the, the actual factory that made them for CRKT to start making them again. So this is basically made in the same place that the old CRKT uh, version is made. And it's a cool little knife. It's perfect for this little tin. It's, uh, what is it, an inch... an inch and it's all it's almost an inch and three quarters long and uh I'm not sure what the steel is kind of doesn't matter does it i mean it's just a little it's it's a little survival knife it's sharp as hell it's got a nice flat grind um it is small it's a one and a half finger knife or a two finger knife so having this little paracord fob is a good thing to do now uh i plan on on making this a survival knife. I want to lighten up my daily backpack. My daily carry backpack is just laden down with everything I could possibly need for any eventuality. And I just need to be a little more realistic. I have all that stuff in my car. I have all that stuff at my desk at work. So I don't know why I have to be lugging it around. So I'm going to pare down and I'll, I'll see what it's like carrying a survival kit. That's that fits in a tin like this, though. I will 
make it more realistic for my more suburban lifestyle. So I probably won't have fish hooks in there. Uh, might, you know, I don't know. We'll, we'll figure out what I put in there, but cool little knife. Uh, great way to support Doug Ritter and his, uh, and his, um, efforts and just well supporting him all of his money goes into knife rights and when you buy this little mark five this is not made by hoag so i don't think he's I, I think the money you know the proceeds go to him when you buy this knife um as opposed to splitting it with hoag and royalties and all that stuff so uh also a cool thing with this knife is um you can wrap this in paracord and and uh get it to be a little more uh, fill, hand filling, but otherwise it's a great, tiny, light, little capable knife. Perfect for your Altoid survival kit. So yeah. And you can put your weed in it, dude. Uh, of course that is a joke. Well, not in Virginia anymore. I guess that's legal now here. Too bad. Uh, too bad. I've aged out. All right. I'm going to put this aside. And then uh, lastly, I just wanted to show off one more knife, and uh, and then it's getting late, so I'll probably uh, I'll probably knife fight myself. Where the hell did I put it? Oh, the off grid hoglet. Anyone see this one? I have one of the MK5s. They're great. I mean, it's such a great little. And if you um, if you have to wear a um, security tag at work, this will fit perfectly behind it. You might have to take this off, uh, but I, I've always liked carrying a little uh, neck knife behind my work ID, and uh, this would fit perfectly. You know, you just have it popping up a little bit, and then you have a knife right behind your work ID, just in case. You never know. James says, "I think the CRK collab with Shira Goroff are peacockish." Ever see them? They look, huh? The look ruins a perfectly good F9. Oh, uh, wait. No, no, no. I'm thinking of the Custom Knife Factory. The, the Chris Reeve Knives collab with Shira Goroff. I do not know that knife. I do not know that knife. But peacockish. That's the perfect way to put it. It's like, yeah, just showing it, showing it, showing it. Dang, now I'm going to go out and get an MK3. Thanks, Bob. A Mark III. Well, you will not be... You will not be bummed. I, you know, I think that is a, a knife works exclusive, along with the um, with the folders. I believe that uh, Peter, you'll have to go to Knife Works, but do it, do it. You'll love it. I know you've been liking the fixed blades recently. You got a you got a uh, a, a bunch of off grids recently that I know you've been digging. Um, the Ritter is so good. It's so good, and it's it's really light. That's what I like about it. It's light and it's and it's really capable and broad and thin and sharp. Jan, sucrets were the candy of cough drops. That's right. Sucrets. All right. We know James is a senior. No, I'm just kidding. Ah. Okay, so this is the hoglet. Look at this little thing. So it's a uh, what is a two and three quarters, almost a three inch cleaver style blade and it immediately reminded me of the js jx6 i think one of the um uh prepared mind 101 designed uh bark river knives and now i can't remember the designation but uh tier one loaned it to me justin from from tier one gear reviews loaned it to me quite a while back and i showed it off here and on the uh, midweek supplemental and i really liked that knife and this one is evocative of that. It's it's not it's not too much like it, but it's kind of that same uh, full bellied blade, meaning it's a continuous belly, and then it looks kind of cleavery, but it still has a very useful point. This has like that can still get into a clamshell package point that I really like, and then it's got this nicely contoured G10 handle. And it's cryo D2. So this is like a great little utility knife. And and I got when I got it, I was kind of like, hmm, what am I gonna do with this thing? Uh this was one of the one of the off-grid knives that appealed to me most. And uh I got it in hand and I was like, this is really good, and I really like it. I'm not gonna carry it 
uh, daily. This isn't a daily carry fixed blade for me. I like uh, I like things that tend more towards the, uh, you know, double edged and scary uh, for that kind of for that kind of carry. And this has ended up being a great desk knife. This is a man cave knife. Uh, it has been sitting on my desk and getting used for almost everything. Hey, that that happens right here at the desk. I cleaned it up for you. The only thing that was on it was tape. Uh, but, you know, uh, I'm just really digging this thing. Um, so one thing I very much like about it is the... Oh, yeah, we have an affiliate link. You can buy this or any off-grid knife through the affiliate link. Um, but I really love that jimping there. And another cool thing about this, I think I may have mentioned this when I showed it off uh, during the midweek supplemental, is the butcher hole. It's like it's it, it looks kind of like a an old school cleaver the way it swells out. It's just kind of a charismatic little thing, and it's called the hoglet. Hoglet. Look at that. That's kind of wedgy. I don't mean wedgy. That was gross. <laughs> All right, guys. So uh, looks like I lost my camera again. Well, man, just in the nick of time, because that's the last knife I'm going to show close up. Tactical cheese knife. <laughs> yeah. Yes. This would actually make a great picnic knife. He brings up a great point. This would be a great picnic knife. We go to the pool a lot in the summer. This is what I should bring for cutting sausages and cheese. This is perfect for summer sausage and cheese. Thank you, man. I mean, it's it's got other uses, and I'm sure it's it you know it would be great for outdoorsy kind of stuff too, camp stuff, small camp chores. But I just don't know because I haven't really started camping yet. But I want to. But for me, this is great around. You know, this is frankly, this has opened a bunch of boxes recently, and done a little bit of cardboard duty. And you don't even see, you don't even see the evidence of that like you do on say this. Well. Yeah, I guess the coating is really good on these. I thought you could see where cardboard had been sliced. But yeah, tactical cheese knife. All right, well, I think I'm going to skip the knife life news for now. And uh, sorry, Jim. Uh, I know you you prepped it. Uh, well, actually, bef bef you know what? I'm going to skip the second story. I do want to show you the first one real quick because I, I mentioned it earlier. And, and basically, the whole show is about this concept. And it's the new... Kombu no guard, which is dragon backwards. And the no guard is a new flipper by, by, um, by Polish designer, um, Gregor Grabarski. Let me make sure I'm not totally, totally butchering his name. Um, Grabarski. Yeah. Gregor Gre Grabarski. And, uh, it's this very heavily contoured handle and a very, it's a very over-designed knife, but it looks cool, you know. Uh, you're not going to be holding this in a multitude of different ways. As a matter of fact, it looks like it's pretty much good for one handhold. Um, the original, you can see the prototype. If you scroll down, uh, this is a knife news story. The prototype to me actually is more appealing. Uh, you'll see it on the left. Uh, the handle looks just a little bit broader, and it's got a uh, a real worn cliff blade in that the edge is or the blade is is fully straight it doesn't have that sort of mask looking thing it looks like a bandit mask on the blade you know over the opening hole and going to the front uh, I, I believe that is strictly um cosmetic i i don't believe that that is a fuller and to me, it's just gunking it up. It's like, you don't need to do that. You don't need to put that on there. Plus, I like the way it looks better with the with the straight flat handle. But this is one of their premium knives. You can see it's got a, a really nice uh, overlay of uh, some sort of really nice carbon fiber. And you know you don't hear me say that too often. Um, but I like these kind of exotic carbon fibers. Uh, which you see a lot more of. Actually, you see more of those now than the kind of carbon fiber I don't like, which is that sort of regular weave carbon fiber. Uh, what is this? This is M390 steel and, uh, you know, titanium and, and, and what you're used to. But it's that design. What do you think? Is that overly, overly, is that too much? Kind of feel like it is. 
but hey, you know, I, I'm not here to to bring anyone down or dis. Kombu is a is a makes really. I mean, he's got a vision. He's a knife maker with a vision, and his uh, his work is identifiably his. So huh, I'll leave it at that. What do you think of this knife? I'm curious. And also, I'm not crazy about the plunge grind. I'm not. I don't like curved plunge grinds that much. I know that's strictly a matter of taste and has nothing to do with how it works. By the way, I have a feeling this knife would work very well. The blade looks pretty darn useful with the with the broad broadness of it and the uh, and the high height of the grind. But yeah, just a little too much. All right. I'm going to leave, I'll leave that there. I saw uh, LTK, uh, 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 love those knives video on the no guard. Typically great best tech quality, not my cup of tea, but it sure is pretty. It is pretty. It is pretty. It's pretty. All of Kombu stuff is really unique. I agree. I think my favorite knife of his was that giant clip point he came out with not too long ago, maybe a year and a half ago. And I never ended up getting that, and I regret that. That was a cool knife. That is a show-off type of knife for sure. It is. Great for IG picks. That's why you buy it. Just show it off from all the different angles. So all the swoops and things. Uh, yeah, that is a uh, photograph knife for sure. All right. All right. Real quickly, real quickly, I want to do a knife fight. I'm going to do this with myself. I'm going to give myself a minute each. First, I'm going to sheath this up so I don't cut the cheese. Tactical cheese knife. Exotic versus plain Jane. I just heard somewhere that exotic is now a word you can't use because you might offend someone. Exotic. Okay. I'm going to use it right here. I hope no one is offended. All right. In... Three, two, one. The knife, the knife world, knives. Okay, I'm going to start this over <laughs> since I can. In three, two, one. You know that knives are the oldest tools around. Everything has been done to the knife. Every treatment, every design has been made. Until we get little lightsaber knives, we've seen it all from knives. The one thing we haven't seen is variations on exotic builds and materials. We have seen them, but we have not exhausted them. So if we get to the point where we have, well, we have gotten to the point where we have perfected the utility of the knife, we have all different kinds of grinds, all different kinds of blade shapes, all different kinds of handle shapes and mechanisms. The one place to go is exotic. The one place to go is new materials, exotic treatments of materials, and exotic builds. Therefore, uh, exotic knives are the superior ones because they take old technology and keep them relevant. Okay. Eh, kind of weak. Maybe my heart wasn't in that one. Plain Jane. Knives are the oldest tools going. They're the oldest tools around. They have seen every sort of treatment. We have every sort of blade. We've seen every sort of handle and crazy exotic materials used. The only place to go is back to basics. The only place to go is to simplify. Why? Well, we have a thing called jewelry. And jewelry is something you adorn yourself with uh, that uses exotic materials, exotic builds, and exotic shapes. Why not save these exotic and, and artistic uh, flourishes for things like jewelry? Knives are tools. Knives should be plain Jane. Knives should be neutral because they are neutral. They are cutting tools and cutting tools only. Therefore, back to basics is the only way to go forward with knives. Thank you. Thank you. And scene. <laughs> Chime in. Your thoughts? Let me know. Let me know what you think. Because actually, 
I hadn't really pre-thought this. I thought uh, maybe we'd have two people I could pit against one another. You say exotic, I'm triggered. <laughs> I'm going to report you and cancel you. <laughs> Be the first knife person canceled. And, uh, and uh, of course, I'm not talking about demonetized. That's funny. I hope I didn't trigger anyone there. Exotic. How ridiculous. How ridiculous. In any case... Um, yeah, yeah, I didn't really game this one out, but actually the the arguments for both are almost the same. You know, it's just a matter of your stance. Um, I uh, I don't know how I feel about it. I guess I'm moving back in a plain Jane uh, direction. Um, for a while, I was dazzled by some things, but you know, and M materials plain won the debate. Interesting. All right, well, I I can get with that. Uh, exotic can also mean shapes, and I do like shapes. Exotic could also mean new locks, and I do like new locks and new mechanisms and stuff like that. And for a while, I was collecting on that basis. And then I realized I'm, I'm not the Museum of Knives, so I don't have to collect it because it's unique and it's new. And so a lot of those knives have gone away. Another knife that will be going away soon, plain is better generally for EDC. I would have to agree with you. Another another knife that will be going away soon is this Arcturus. Make sure that you tune in next week uh, to see who wins this. Uh, this is the Gentleman Junkie knife giveaway, the real steal. To me, plain Jane knife can be exotic. Or maybe the more, more appropriate is erotic. Woo! Uh, well, here's a perfect example. Plain Jane is a term that gets used a lot uh, with the Sabenza, especially if it doesn't, well when it doesn't have any inlays or anything. But, um, you know, at this point, uh, I mean, titanium isn't exotic anymore, but when they were first made, titanium was, was an exotic material housed in a plain Jane sort of design or, or, or used to construct a plain Jane sort of design. So ah, it just bends the mind if you let it. But it's midnight here on the East Coast, so that's easy to do. So uh, be sure to check in with us on Sunday. We have uh, Peter Carey. You know Peter Carey. Uh, this is episode 323. If you want to uh, make sure that you get it, make sure you go to the knifejunkie.com slash 323. You'll also find show notes there and uh, other tidbits about the podcast. Uh, Peter Carey, awesome guy. I mean, I, I, I reached out to him because I love his knives and then and then got to talking to him. Actually, he called me on the phone a week before, and we we chatted. And man alive, what a cool dude, and what what crazy awesome knives he makes. He's living the life for sure. Uh, another thing that we have to remind you about is just to listen. If you just want to listen to the podcast, uh, the RSS feeds are a thing. Uh, RSS feed problems are a thing of the past. They are gone. We have figured it out. Thank, thank you again, Jim. And you can listen to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Stitcher, which I, uh, and uh, tune in. And uh, uh, where else? There are other places. But these are the, you know, these are the big names. So check us out on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Stitcher, and tune in. Also, the podcast app. Uh, which is one that I have on my phone kind of randomly. Uh, also, you can check us out on the knifejunkie.com, knifejunkie.com slash Facebook. Uh, check us out on Instagram. And uh, I've been posting a lot more there. I've been more active there recently. And uh, just dig the dig the forum over there. So uh, keep chiming in even after this show is over. Keep commenting. Let me know what you think. Uh, it's always a, a pleasure, and it, tonight it was a great pleasure to meet Scott Stills and to check out his new knife, and uh, just to talk with you guys. Uh, it puts wind in my sails, and uh, I always, always, always look forward to Thursday nights. Also, check out the Wednesday podcast, and um, I think that's about it. I'm going to whisper like our president. All right, uh, for Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying, Good golly, don't take dull for an answer. <laughs>